Your support helps us bring you programs you love. Go to wyomingpbs.org, click on support, and become a sustaining member or an annual member. It's easy and secure. Thank you. It's not often that a Christmas gift can change a life. But that's exactly what happened when Bon Ringler unwrapped a leather kit given to him by his wife, Kathy. And now from his workshop at the base of the beautiful Beartooth Mountains in Clark, Wyoming, Bon Ringler has been producing fine quality, handmade leather goods since 1989. Ringler has kept alive a tradition of manufacturing leather items for hunters, horsemen, and outdoor enthusiasts that are made like they used to be, one at a time, to last a lifetime. Today he has customers from all corners of the world. The American Rifleman called his old school leather work impressive and said his signature Wyoming combination holster is extremely versatile. In fact, Ringler has now made nearly 2,000 of his famous Wyoming combination holsters, which can be worn in four different positions. Von Ringler in your workshop in Clark, Wyoming. Von, um, how long have you been working with leather and how long have you been in Wyoming? I've been working full time with leather for 30 years and I've been in Wyoming for, well, since 1979. Uh, we uh, moved out here from West Virginia, my wife and I, in 1981. I worked on ranches, I worked in the oil field after that and uh, finally I got a job doing leather work because uh, it was my hobby anyway. How did you um, come to like it? What's, what's the backstory on how you got involved with leather? Well, uh, I grew up around horses and I was always having to repair tack, my own bridles and saddles and things. Uh, I, I couldn't do much more than put a rivet in so my wife bought me a Tandy leather kit, and uh, it had a pattern for uh, a billfold, a couple coasters, and a belt. As soon as I uh, started trying to, to build those things, I found out that I really liked leather work. It became my hobby, my biggest hobby, and uh, finally uh, I got a job doing it full time and uh, it's been my career ever since. Your expertise, Vaughn, is with holsters. You've made a lot, you make a lot of different holsters for a lot of different guns. Let's kind of go through the process on, on how this works, how you turn a, a side of a cow literally into a beautiful holster. Okay, well, the first thing I have to do, uh, once I find out what gun the customer has, this is a Ruger Blackhawk, I have to make a pattern of the type of holster they want. This is called a Tom Three Persons holster. Uh, that's what they want. I'm going to uh, lay this on a piece of cardboard, lay it on its side, and then trace the gun on the cardboard. Once I get it traced out, I will I will make sure it, it looks like it's going to work right. And then I'll cut it out. I'll cut the cardboard out, lay the cardboard on the leather and cut around the holster coming up with the actual piece of leather shaped like a holster. It doesn't look much like a holster right now but by the time I'm through with it, it will. After I have this cut out and I'm happy with the shape of it and everything, I'll dip it in water Now I have it wet about halfway through the leather. Now it's pliable, it's flexible. And the thing is, once I wrap it around the gun and use a little bit of pressure molding the leather to the gun, it will stay that way. What I'm doing, I'm manipulating the fibers of the leather. I'm uh, pulling them in a, in, uh, with such force that 
the leather will stay that way even after it's dry. Vaughn, you make a lot of different holsters for a lot of different types of, of, of pistols. How can you do it all? How, each pistol has its own um, form. How does that process work for you? I actually started making holsters. I had a how-to book and it showed uh, a few holsters, western style holsters. I, uh, I made those holsters and I knew that there was a lot of different designs people wanted besides those holsters. So now, I, you know, after 30 years of making holsters, somebody explains their need to me. Like they're, they want to carry it in the mountains, for, for instance. They want to carry it in the mountains. They have a rather large gun that's hard to carry. I usually say, I think you need a shoulder holster because if you're actually going to be hiking, riding a horse, or doing uh, hunting, doing stuff like that, and you're going to have it on for a long time, you're going to need something more comfortable and easy to carry than the hip holster. So most of the, the holsters that you make are custom hol holsters for people that have individual needs for whatever their application is. Most of them end up being custom, even though I make uh, a few <clears throat> different lines of holsters, say the Tom Three Persons holster, I make a Wyoming combination holster that I invented. I make a, a, one I call the line ball holster. I make an 1880 style shoulder holster, but that's kind of a, a regular line for me. It seems like everybody has a different idea about what gun they're gonna carry and uh, just what they're gonna be doing with it. So I alter that till it fits their need. Sure. And you're not the only person in Wyoming who makes leather holsters and other le the leather items. Is that, is that correct? Uh, yeah, there's, there's other people that make holsters, uh, uh, fine leather workers. Uh, I'm, I'm probably the only one that really specializes in holsters. As far as I know in Wyoming, um, there's a lot of people make saddles, uh, leather tack, but I've pretty, my uh, business pretty much has evolved from that to gun leather. And it's not really just nationwide, it's now all over the world, is that? That's correct, yeah. So what happens next? Okay, I've got the holster molded. As you can see, it's the shape of the gun. You know, I'm gonna go through different processes to, to finish this holster, but when I'm done and the, and the, and the leather's oiled with Nate's foot oil, it's going to stay this way as long as somebody uses it. It'll last, I'm sure, a long, long time, but from yeah. start to finish, from, from, okay. from doing your cut to when you're ready to deliver. Well, it depends on how complicated I want to get with the, uh, with the holster. Uh, this is what a finished holster looks like. This is uh, uh, floral carved in the Sheridan style carving pattern. and. Uh, this holster will probably take three days to make. I was gonna show you, um, I've started with, uh, with this holster. I just started carving this holster right here. First, I took the holster and I molded the shape. I flattened it back out, but after I'm all through carving this, I'll re-wet it and it'll go right back into the shape of this. I've taken my tracing pattern here. This is a design that I drew out that would fit this holster. <clears throat> I've laid it down there and traced it. Then I've making, made my knife cuts to this upper part here. I've used the, the background and the uh, bevelers and everything to make the design. How much of an artist are you? Was that something that you've always dabbled in, or is it something that um, you've learned later in life? Well, you know, I, I don't consider myself an artist, but I consider myself a craftsman. And I'm more of a person that knows what a good design looks like. And then I work, I work at drawing it and uh, carving it. I think I have to work a little bit harder than a, than a true artist does, but I get the same effect in the end. 
tell us what Sheridan style means, Vaughn. Well, Sheridan uh, style, of course, was was uh, it was started in Sheridan, Wyoming. Uh, Don King, the saddle maker, I don't know if he started it, but but he's the one that really brought the notoriety into the into the Sheridan style carving. And what it is, it's intricate flowers, it's flowing lines, and it, it uh, uh, basically it has to make sense. You have a flower, you have the stems and the petals and the uh, leaves, and they all make sense, and they all have a flowing design. But I think what, one of the biggest things about it is it's, is it's very intricate. Vaughn, you've made your cut, you've formed the um, holster with the gun. What are you doing now? Well, now that all the lines are cut, I have to go in and give texture to all this. So you have to do backgrounding, you have to do beveling. I've got all these tools that I, about half of them I'll use somewhere in this project. Um, this is a background tool and it does just what it's, the name says. It, it makes a background, it makes the things look three-dimensional. So part of, part of this process, Vaughn, that you find most enjoyable and different, different steps that you go through to, to make the holster? Well, I think the... I think that floral carving is uh, kind of the icing on the cake. Uh, I make a lot of holsters. Most of them are probably absolutely plain. Uh, the reason for that is because uh, it, it gets expensive to the customer when you're uh, making uh, floral carved holsters. It just becomes uh, cost prohibitive and I think that in, I think that making something completely carved is probably the ultimate that leather workers do uh, whether it's saddles holsters belts whatever whatever they're making uh, floral carving is the uh, ultimate design and every design is unique every design is unique and it and you know you just you don't buy a you don't buy a pattern to carve a holster there's so many different holsters so many different shapes so many different size guns that you uh, have to make a pattern for each one and the only way to be able to make a pattern is actually design it yourself has the process of leather making evolved over the years, or is this the same way it's been done for a long, long time? It's exactly the same way it was done years ago. Um, just like with any uh, craft that you do with your hands, it really hasn't changed much. Uh, I know there's some, there is some new processes, but it's not really what you call hand carved or hand done anymore if you use those processes. If you use some kind of machine to to stamp this out, I know there is machines that'll do that, but most leather workers, uh, even though it's quicker, they may make, make more money out of it, they still want to do it the, uh, the original way. Now, dozens of years ago, you had many places where you could buy your leather, and that's not the case today. No, uh, there's only two, uh, tanneries in the United States that's making this vegetable tan leather, which is what we have to use to, to form and, and uh, tool holsters. And I, it, it's because of the high cost of tanning and trying to keep up with the regulations uh, required by, by the government that has driven uh, most tanneries out of business. But there are overseas tanneries who have tried
try to fill the void or is it primarily the two U.S. tanneries where you, you uh, get all of your leather? Well, uh, I still get leather from the U.S. tanneries, but yes, there are several foreign tanneries uh, importing into the United States now. And uh, the reason for that is the, the fact that they're not as strict with their environmental codes in those countries. <clears throat> Has your cost of product risen substantially over the last few years? Has it stayed about the same? No, it's, it's, it's went up uh, a lot. It's probably three or four times more expensive uh, to buy a piece of leather now than it was when I first started. You have to pass that cost on to the customer or you can't stay in business. Sure. And that's why my the price of my holsters and everything I make keep going up um, because I still want to use the best leather that you can buy. Uh, I think the customers appreciate that. They know they're getting U.S. leather. Uh, they know that uh, every piece is, uh, is the best that, that we can find. We, do, we, we uh, always ask for uh, grade A leather. We never, we never scrimp on our leather. How, um, how do you market yourself? Do you, do you um, go around Wyoming every now and then? You're here in Clark. Um, you're somewhat away from Population Center. How do you market um, what you do? Well, I think that uh, my word of mouth is, uh, uh, I've been in business for 30 years doing leather work. Uh, word of mouth is, uh, is the best advertisement I have. I, I used to do national advertising. Uh, I don't have to do the national advertising anymore, but I still have them, the customers I developed around the country and around the world. Uh, I still uh, have them, those customers coming back and, and uh, buying our products. You told me earlier you're a little busier than you want to be. Well, uh, right now uh, I'm doing uh, uh, it all by myself because my employee is uh, on his honeymoon. He just got married to my daughter last week. And so, <laughs> and so that's, uh, I'm a little bit short-handed right now, but he's gonna be back. So how does that mentoring process work? Um, how, um, is, is it just someone who just has an interest, who wants to learn, who then becomes um, uh, involved with someone um, of your caliber? Is that generally how it's passed on? Yeah. Um, uh, Alex uh, uh, is my employee, now my son-in-law. He came from Indiana and uh, he, uh, he wanted to come out here and learn how to do leather work. Uh, I hired him and he's been here two and a half years. He's learning very quickly. He's uh, doing some, uh, a lot of carving. Matter of fact, in the mentoring program uh, right now, he's through the Wyoming Arts Council, uh, we're making a completely carved uh, Buscadero holster. And, uh, and uh, that'll be uh, finished uh, quite soon. And, and then he can uh, show it to the Arts Council and, and uh, they'll take it from there. So if there's a, a young person watching who, who thinks that this might be something they'd like to try, how would one go about that? Is it just as simple as ordering a kit through the Tandy Leather Company and going, going on from there? Well, that was the way I started, but I, I, you know, now um, there is several leather workers that, uh, that will take on apprentices. and. Uh, and it's, uh, I think, a lot more schools, a lot more classes that you can get for leather work than, than, in, the, than in the past. I know of uh, several leather makers, saddle makers, uh, that do different type of stuff uh, that uh, have classes. They, they do, uh, say, a month-long class 
two months, three months. I think that's probably one of the best ways to uh, to get some experience and learn leather work. Despite that you've been doing this for 30 years, you told me also you're still learning. Oh, definitely. I, I, I'm learning every day and, and uh, I guess over the years I've, I've made about every type of holster imaginable, but still uh, the different needs people have and the different guns they come to me with, uh, I, I don't think I'll ever, uh, I don't think I'll ever come close to knowing it all. Vaughn, you're most known for your holsters, but holsters aren't the only thing you make. What else do you have? Well, I, I, I have a, a few items here that uh, I thought was kind of interesting. I don't uh, really have a lot to show. Everything I make usually goes out to the customer, but uh, uh, I, I have here a, a box I made for my wife. It was a, uh, it was a present for Valentine's Day. And uh, I kind of like the way it turned out. I, I made a I made a couple more of them actually, but uh, uh, the interesting thing about this was I wanted to carve the top, and and I did. And this is Sheridan style carving. But the funny thing about it is, it stretched the leather. When you carve a lot in one area, it'll always stretch the leather. But I didn't realize it was going to bulge up in the shape it did. Once it did that, I thought, well, that looks pretty good. So, so that was something I did in the, uh, on the other ones I've made. Uh, it stands up, it almost looks like a, a trophy buckle or something, mm -hmm. the, way it, the way it stands up. That was one of my items. Uh, made some nice sheets, some wallets. Uh, yeah. I. I make several wallets. I don't make a I don't make a whole lot, but uh, but this one was uh, one with the with the Wyoming bucking horse. I kind of like that. Neat design. Uh, it seems like everybody's looking for a real leather wallet. They want something that's uh, that'll hold up a little longer than the ones they can buy in the store. Can't get more authentic than that. I don't. Yeah. Think. Uh, this is what I call Montana Territory holster. I've made a lot of these, but I finally made my uh, one for myself. This was a, a, a four and five eighths inch Ruger Vaquero, and a, and a custom knife here. I made the set to match. It also has the. This is made with the money, the old money belt style, where you actually put your gold and silver coins in here to hold them, and then you close them in with the billet of the, of the belt. Uh, I also have uh, this, or here's a Buscadero holster. Now this is a type of holster that the movie star Cowboys made popular. Uh, a lot of people think that, uh, that the old Cowboys in the West used this type of holster, but, but they actually didn't. They used this type of holster. Um, this was just something that uh, for the B Westerns and, and uh, that's where that got started. Uh, I make uh, a lot of knife sheaths. These are molded knife sheaths that you just slip the knife in and it uh, the hilt goes down uh, inside the holster to about right there and then they just kind of snap into place. It's a good, uh, it's a good design for uh, a sheath uh, that you don't have to have a strap to hold it in. Uh, I also uh, this is a this is a Wyoming combination holster. I've made almost 2,000 of them, but this was number 1,000. It was one of the it was the first one I ever carved, um, and uh, I kind of liked it. I've done a couple of them since, but uh, but that was the first. Tell us what a Wyoming Combination Holster is. Well, the Wyoming Combination Holster, I invented that, uh, this holster when I was working for Fowler Leather in, in Cody, Wyoming. And I was trying to come up with a shoulder holster that I could carry in the mountains. Uh, I was, uh, I've been carrying a Buscadero holster, but it just got 
really heavy uh, on, on my leg and it kind of was uncomfortable. So I needed to come up with something that would, that would get it off my hip onto my shoulder. So I finally come up with the design for the Wyoming Combination Holster and it, it goes on your shoulder. It has a series of snaps for different layers of clothes. Uh, you can wear it from your shirt up to your heavy coat. You can wear it under your coat, over your coat, it really doesn't matter. But the real thing that makes it the combination is you can also wear it on your hip. You just drop it down like that. It's as easy as that. Uh, very comfortable on your hip uh, when you're riding or, or even walking for a, uh, for a short distance. It's also uh, out of your way when you're uh, working over a campfire, maybe field dressing an animal. Uh, you can just turn it around to the other side if so it'll either work strong side or cross straw. It has a bullet pouch that uh, holds some extra cartridges. But the most, uh, the, the best thing about it is it's very versatile uh, when you're up in the mountains hunting or riding or just hiking. Uh, you're always taking coats uh, you know, you know, take your take your coat off, put your coat on. Uh, situations are changing, and the versatility is what is what makes this holster unique. Fine, you told me earlier your wife Kathy retired last year. You near retirement, or do you see yourself doing this for quite a while? Well, I I, I don't think I'm ready to retire. I still love what I do. Uh, I, I, I like making holsters, uh, leather work's still my hobby even though it is my profession and uh, I think I'll be around for quite a while. Von Ringler, thank you so much for joining us on Wyoming Chronicle. Thank you, Craig.